the source codes for Half-Life and Half-Life Source are publicly available. That's uh, not a recent development, by the way. Don't worry, you haven't missed anything. Not wanting to rewrite the entire game from scratch, Valve copied the code from Half-Life 1 and basically did the bare minimum to make it work in Source. The code is similar enough to be directly compared, so I did that. Gonarch's melee damage was changed. In Half-Life, the attack did 50 damage on easy, 60 on medium, and 70 on hard. Usually when a number changes with difficulty, Half-Life Source will just take the number that's used for hard. However, in this case, it was set to just 15. Also, usually any significant value like this would be read in from a console variable, but in Half-Life Source, this was changed to be hard-coded. Most sources of damage will temporarily offset the player's camera. The offsets are described with three numbers that specify how many degrees to offset the camera in each axis. In Half-Life, the yaw value for the melee aim punch was not set at all, which means the camera won't move left or right at all. In Half-Life Source, they said, we, we gotta spice it up a bit, so they just read in Gonarch's yaw value. What? Remember how many degrees there are in a circle? Yeah, that's quite a few degrees. So depending on where Gonarch is facing, you'll sometimes get this, but most of the time it'll be more like this. In more positive news, the maximum number of baby headcrabs that are allowed to exist at once was nerfed from 20 to 6. However, the damage that baby headcrabs do was buffed from 1, 2, or 3 to 10. Bull squids saw many changes as well. The damage type of the spit projectile was changed from generic to bullet. This is why there's a bullet impact sound when it hits you. This also means that enemies with armor will be protected from it. The spit projectile spawns higher up and more forward on the model. Why? Bull squids have some kind of feature where they intentionally take a detour if they get hurt while running up to an enemy. This didn't sound like anything I had ever seen before, so I tried to activate this code for myself and I just couldn't get it to happen. Either way, this feature was completely removed in Half-Life Source. The bull squids in Half-Life Source don't seem to ever eat food. I'm not sure why this is. I couldn't find any glaring errors in the code. In any case, they made it so that bull squids would not have food again for 50 seconds after eating one meal. In Half-Life Source, bull squids won't attack each other. With the crossbow, if you make a save while a bull is in the air, it won't appear when the save is loaded. This is because it sets its class name to an entity that doesn't exist. This was fixed in Half-Life Source. The multiplayer sniper mode's damage was technically nerfed from 120 to 50, but due to some very bad programming, it's actually buffed. In Half-Life, the sniper mode worked by tracing a line from the player's camera to where they were looking and then damaging whatever the line hit basically a very powerful bullet. In Half-Life Source, instead of damaging whatever the line hits, it teleports a bolt to that same place and then manually calls the touch function. If the bolt hits something that's not damageable, it will stay there for a while before it despawns, which seems to be the entire purpose of this change because that was not a thing that happened in Half-Life 1. If it does hit something damageable, well, the bolt doesn't get removed instantly. It takes a few ticks, and during each tick, the touch function will be called organically, because that's how that works. The actual damage will be somewhere between 150 and 300. The gluon gun's range was buffed from 2048 units to essentially infinity. You've probably noticed that the gargantua stomp attack looks like this. This is because the line of code that is supposed to give the sprite's speed was simply removed with no explanation. Apparently, gargantuas are supposed to be able to know where their enemies are without actually seeing them for up to 59 seconds. I couldn't actually get a clip of this fact in action though. The gargantuas in Half-Life Source seem to be pretty unaware in general. I already have a video all about the Tau Cannon that talked about the ways the gun changed in Half-Life Source, so I won't go over it again. Vortigaunts, Hound Eyes, Controllers, and Alien Grunts all had the ability to dynamically recruit squad members, but now only human soldiers do. Soldiers don't think that they can shoot through glass in Half-Life Source. The beams that surround a Vortigaunt when charging up an attack can now hurt things for 10 shock damage.
Ospreys are considered a neutral NPC in Half-Life Source, which doesn't mean much other than that certain NPCs won't be tempted to shoot at them. The Revolver's multiplayer zooming function can be used in single player if cheats are on. Zombies have three different claw attacks which are supposed to push you to the left, right, or back away from the zombie. In Half-Life Source, all three attacks will push you to the left of the zombie. When an NPC sees multiple enemies at once, it has to decide one way or another which one to attack. In some cases, the type of character that the enemy is will play a role. In Half-Life, the following NPCs would prefer to attack enemies of these types over all other enemies. Human military hating the player, alien military, and player allies. Alien military hating the player and human military. Bull squids hating headcrabs. On an even higher level of priority, soldiers hating gargantuas. None of these higher priority relationships exist in Half-Life Source, except for a few. Controllers hating the player and soldiers and alien grunts hating each other. Technically, the priority of this mutual relationship was downgraded. In Half-Life, it took the same level of priority as soldiers hating gargantuas did. But since these two NPCs no longer have any other competing higher level priority relationships, it didn't actually change anything. While making this video, I found a few interesting changes in the form of code comments. In the code for grenades, someone changed go ahead and emit the danger sound to just emit the danger sound. You know those little flying dudes that you see at the end of the game? Those are actually fully programmed NPCs, most of their code being related to how they move. In the class definition for these NPCs, there's a declaration for a function titled poop. This was never actually implemented, just declared. In Half-Life Source, this line was commented out and Adrian, probably Finall, commented, WTF? Valve would implement bird shitting in Half-Life 2, which I guess was okay by Adrian's weird little standards. In the code for bull squids, there was a comment that said, unless after a tasty head crab. In Half-Life Source, someone added, Yum! Wee.